Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. It is Tuesday, the 23rd of uh, August. I still, it is still August. And today's little demo is uh, we're picking up back off where we left off last week with the tools and bits and bobs that I used on the Panasonic shoot in San Francisco. And this was one of the fun things that I used. And this is something that I bought actually quite a few years ago for a shoot I was doing with Mercedes because I wanted to be able to mount a camera onto the car itself. Now, there's a few things to consider when you're mounting a camera on a car. Uh, one of those would be you don't want the camera to fall off. That would be kind of bad. So the thing is, you, you've got this, um, uh, you've got this this suction mount idea, but it's got to be strong. You know, you don't want to go cheap out on this. You don't want to go buy a fifty dollars suction mount and hope that it's going to hold on. Um, two reasons, obviously. One being you don't want your camera falling off when you're driving around corners. That would that would be kind of awful. Um, but you also don't want the camera falling off of the mount and onto the car itself, scratching it up, especially if you're driving around a $100,000 Mercedes through the streets of Manhattan like I was when I did the thing back then. So uh, security is key. Having a really good product that is really going to hold on is something that you obviously really want to make sure you're doing. So I invested in a product by a company we all know and love, Manfrotto. Now this is a proper Manfrotto suction mount. This thing is strong as can possibly be, and it works really, really well. Let me show you the, how this whole thing comes together. First of all, let's take this off. The ball head is not part of it. That's the piece that I added on. This may look familiar. There we go, maybe, there it is. This may look familiar. This is the same ball head I've used for a bunch of other stuff. So let's just set that aside for now. This is the mount itself. And let's go ahead for a little close-up view of this thing. You can see what this looks like. So this is the mount in its entirety. And this plastic thing on the bottom is just a, a protector. This is a cover. So we can take that off. And the reason we want to keep this on here whenever we're not using it is because you are relying on the suction here being very, very clean and strong and not getting messed up. If, if I was to not have this on here and I threw this in my bag and let's say the, the rubber here got a big dent in it, then that is obviously not going to be good for the suction. It's probably going to, uh, to let go of the suction mount uh, more quickly or maybe never even grab it at all. So you want to keep the protector plate on. So the way this thing works is you put this on any smooth surface. So this can be glass, it can be metal like my table here, it can be uh, well, anything that's smooth that doesn't have a lot of grain. So a wood table, for example, is not going to work very well. You know, I've tried mounting it on wood surfaces, it doesn't really work. I've been able to mount it on a smooth stucco wall, uh, not stucco, but a smooth painted wall, but not for very long. It does tend to lose its grip pretty quickly. So uh, the smoother the surface, the better. So again, the hood of a car is going to be fantastic. Even if it has a little bit of a curvature to it, it'll work. You can't have a big curve, but a little curve will work. So here's how the whole thing works. So we've got this guy on here. Go to the right button here. There we go. We've got this thing. We set it down. And this little guy here is the pump, and this is the magic trick here. And you see there's a red line on this pump. What you're going to do is just pump this over and over again until that red line disappears. And once the red line has gone behind the, uh, kind of inside the receiver here, once it's hidden there, then that means it's got good suction. And it tells you, there's a big thing on here that says, repump if red line appears. It's telling you right there. So as it starts to lose its, t its uh, grip, as the red line starts to appear, you just gotta reach over and give it a few more pumps again. So let's do it. So it's down on there. I gotta put a little bit of pressure on to start just to make sure it's got a good seal. And then let's see here, that's, yep, it's already started. So now I'm just gonna pump, pump, pump. And you can see as I let go of it that the red line is getting closer. And it doesn't take too many pumps. But you know, you gotta give it a few. There we go, the red line is hidden. It's barely, I'm just gonna go a couple more just to be safe. And that's it. This thing is now, <laughs> this is on there. You can see it's pulling my desk up. This is not going anywhere. So now I can go ahead and put my, this is just a standard 3816 mount on it. So I can put my tripod head on here, whatever I want. I really like using a ball head for things like this because <clears throat> it's nice and low profile. I can now put my camera on here and position it wherever I like, tilt it, angle it however I need. So if this is at an angle because it's on the hood of a car and I'm trying to level out the camera, I can do that. Lock that into place. And now we have a good solid platform for the camera. Now to get the thing off again, it's a bit, yeah, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, oh, yeah, I pulled it too much. Now, this, this surface is not that great because this has actually come off a little bit. Let's pump it back down a little. Get that in there. There we go. So it's back in again. Now to get this thing off, there's this little nub here and you just need to pull on this thing. It's a, it can be a bit of a bear, but pull on that. Break the seal. Oh, there we go. And it's off. So that, <laughs> you see, left a nice ring on my desk. And that 
is all there is to it. So that will allow you to mount this again on just about anything, uh, anything smooth, and you know you've got confidence with it. Now, I was saying that I bought this for a job for Mercedes. So again, driving around a very expensive car around the streets of Manhattan, not only did I want to make sure the camera didn't fall off and smash onto the ground, I wanted to make sure it didn't fall off and smash onto the hood of the car because that would have been doubly bad. So I am actually, I forgot to do this beforehand. Give me just a second. I'm going to go grab a picture off my wall and show you one of the one of the images that I was able to get with this, which is, uh, which is really cool. So I'll be right back. Here, let's give you this guy to look up, up nice and close while I'm doing that. go. Let's see if I can <clears throat> do this here and so you can actually see it. There you go. That works pretty well. So that is mounted on the hood of the Mercedes. You can tell it's a log exposure because of the blurred street in the background. I was able to uh, obviously keep the, the star in focus. That was needless to say, that was the goal here. Get that star in focus. But having this long exposure, 30th, 15th of a second, I don't remember. This is a few years ago. But uh, by having the the camera mounted so oops, so uh, so permanently, so solidly on the car, I was able to keep it solid in relation to the car. Obviously, the car is moving up and down, rocking back and forth as I'm driving down the streets. But um, but in relation to the car itself, the camera is perfectly solid, and so it was able to allows me to lock in and hold that thing in place. So there you go. So that's it. That is today's photo moment. I wanted to show you this awesome tool because I have loved using this thing. It really has worked out a lot. It worked very well. Um, on the shoot we did last week in San Francisco, we put the camera on the roof of the car, actually, not on the hood, and uh, we did a video going down Lombard Street, which then we're going to accelerate into kind of like a, a mini time lapse, if you will. Uh, one of the things when shooting with a camera on here, so, okay, not this camera, but just pretend. So you got this camera on here. If this is outside of the car, needless to say, it's kind of hard to control. So when I did this picture, I had a automatic timer on the camera and was setting it to shoot every, I don't know, five seconds or something like that. And then I had the images Wi-Fi back into the car automatically so that I could monitor the pictures as we're driving around so we didn't have to stop and, and you know get out of the car and make adjustments. And that was a few years ago. I did that with an Olympus Micro Four Thirds cameras before I had the Lumix cameras. You know, with the Lumix camera now, you could even do full Wi-Fi control so I could adjust exposure without having to get out of the car, which is something I wasn't able to do before. So that's incredibly cool. And then for shooting video, what I did in San Francisco was uh, just HDMI out of the camera into a Ninja Assassin. And if you look back uh, to last week's posts from San Francisco, you'll see a picture where you can see the camera on top of the car and the Ninja Assassin mounted with another suction mount. And this is just a cheap one, but mounted with another suction mount on the inside of the windshield. So I had it up here so I could look at that, not while driving, I could look at that start and stop recording and then actually reach up around to the camera and a dial uh, adjust the neutral density filter to change the exposure on it if I needed to. So that was pretty neat as well. Anyway, lots of different options, lots of different ways you can use this thing. But if you ever want to mount a car, uh, mount a camera onto your car or any type of glass slick surface, then this is the guy. And I was trying to find the model number on this thing and I thought I had it, but that was wrong because I Googled it and came up with something totally different. Um, so I will figure that out. It's so funny. It says two. Let me just try this again. Two four one FB. I'm sure that that's what I Google. Oh, I put the wrong. There we go. Maybe that is the model number. Here we go. This is it. So let's go to my system here. There we go. Manfrotto two forty one FB pump for lightweight cameras. So I guess that means there are bigger ones of these. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. You can check it out. So there you go. That's the guy. So one hundred thirteen dollars. Not bad at all. Um, a couple years ago, that felt more expensive. So this one says for the lightweight cameras, maybe there are bigger ones as well. I don't know. It's something you'll have to look into. But there's the one that you're looking for. 241FB is the is the uh, code part number on that. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow's photo moment is um, is all set and planned. And in just a few minutes here, you'll be watching on this page. We will post a little teaser, a little trailer of what that's going to be. All right, guys, we're out of here. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.